ஸ்ரீபாதராஜம் சரணம் பிரபத்யே சாப்டர் ட்வெண்ட்டி ஒன் தண்டி சுவாமி விசிட்ஸ் த குக்குட்டேஸ்வர டெம்பிள் நெசசிட்டி ஆஃப் ப்யூரிட்டி ஆஃப் பிளேஸ் அண்ட் ஃபீலிங் ஃபார் ஸ்பிரிச்சுவல் ஆஸ்பிரன்ஸ் In compliance with the orders of Sri Mahaguru, Guru Charan and I started on a visit to the Manchala village. On the way, we talked about the Leelas of Sri Pada. I learned many matters relating to the spiritual education from Guru Charan. I asked Guru Charan, Sir, Sri Pada said that a person having the trait of sage Vasista will come to his samsthan as a priest. Who will that very fortunate one be? During which time will he come? Guru Charan said, Shankara Bhatt, Shri Pada declared that after many centuries, a great samsthan in his name will be established at his native place. It is the will of Shri Pada that a great hermit will come to his Mahasamsthan as a priest. Without the divine will, great sages will not be able to arrive there. Meditation for long periods, worship, chanting of holy sacred mantras and worship with devotion and diligence will purify the airy region there. Waves of ideas are broadcasted in all the ten directions from the inner core of the universe. People with sacred feelings will accept the sacred vibrations. People with impure feelings will receive impure vibrations. When the waves of ideas at a particular place become extremely pure and powerful, that place place will effortlessly attract through many wonderful ways great persons by touching their mental consciousness on the other hand if waves of bad ideas are prevalent at a place then that place will attract bad people by touching their mental consciousness in many strange ways therefore A spiritual seeker should reside in places that are pure. He should have purity of mind. He should have friendships only with such people. He should accept money or food only from those who have purity. Those who arrogate themselves to be great scholars in the Vedas and Vedanta cannot obtain the grace of Shri Pada. Scholars with moderate accomplishments but having unblemished minds will gain extraordinary benefits from him. I went to the great holy place Puri Jagannath in Varissa for business. In the temple there, I found Shri Pada in the place of Lord Jagannath's idol. In addition to me, there were three or four devotees of Shri Pada in that temple at that time. He gave them darshan in the forms of their chosen deities and then immediately appeared to them as Shri Pada. He taught them through silence that he is the embodiment of all forms of deities, destroying the pride of Dandi Swami. On the day we went to the temple, Dandi Swami, accompanied by his one or eight disciples, came there. It is our tradition to salute the feet of great persons when we meet them. As soon as we saluted him, Dandi Swami lost his speech. We prayed to Shri Pada Shri Vallabha to grant speech to Dandi Swami. Dandi Swami regained his speech immediately. When Dandi Swami's disciples knew that we were the devotees of Shri Pada, they started to argue with ill-conceived logic. 
Shripada is a black magician. His disciples are also black magicians. With their debased magic, they deprived speech of our Dandi Swami. But because our Swamiji is very powerful, he regained his speech. Our Swamiji will expose the real nature of Shripada. Our great Swamiji will visit Pitikapuram and will receive victory testimonials after defeating Shripada. The people of Pitikapuram village will arrange as a grand victory ride on a chariot. We could not reply. As part of the Leela of Shripada, the dependent will be thrown into very critical conditions and when he cries for rescue, he will be rescued in a very strange way. That is his habit of saving devotees. He is the one who creates the problems. He is the one who shows a solution to the problems and renders help. This sort of divine play is experienced by all the Tha devotees. After some days, Dandiswami came to Pitikapuram. Fortunately, at the same time, I also came to Pitikapuram, which was on the way of my journey. There was no dearth of people in Pitikapuram who had hatred and poisonous feelings towards Sri Bapanarya, Sri Appalaraja Sharma, and Sri Pada. Dandi Swami visited the deities in the Kukuteshwara temple. They also saw the idol of the self manifested Datta. Dandi Swami said, the greatness of the self-manifested Datta who is here is unbounded. The self-manifested Datta made me an instrument to curb the arrogance of Sri Pada who is puffed up with pride declaring that he is an incarnation of Datta. From today, good days started in Pitikapuram. You can now remain carefree. Saying so, he created Vibhuti, Kumkuma and other materials by his willpower and gave them to his followers. The Brahmins of Pitikapuram went to the Kukuteshwara temple to bring Dandiswami into the town amidst the chanting of Vedas. A public announcement was made in the town by the beat of drums. Shri Pada, who is claiming himself to be an incarnation of Datta, should realize his mistake and should prostrate before Dandi Swami. Shri Bapanarya should personally present himself before Dandi Swami and beg for pardon. Shri Appalaraja Sharma should attend before Dandiswami and should hand over the statue of Kalagni Shamanadatta, which is being worshipped in their family through successive generations. He should submit himself to the punishment to be imposed by Swamiji. The Arya Vaishya Council met. Under the presidentship of Sri Venkatapaya Sresti, they resolved that Sri Pada, Sri Appalaraja Sharma and Sri Bapanarya should not bow down to Dandiswami and such misdeeds should not be supported. The assembly of Kshatriyas which was held under the presidentship of Sri Narasimha Varma passed a similar resolution. At that time, Sri Pada was resting under the shade of the Audambara tree in the house of his maternal grandfather. Sri Sresti, who looked at his face radiating divine brilliance, shed tears with heavy grief. Sri Narsimha Varma, Sri Sresti, 
and Shri Bapanarya sat silently near Shri Pada. Appala Raja Sharma sat motionless like a lunatic. Shri Pada, who is equal to Shri Krishna, woke up from sleep and said that he was hungry and that he would like to eat curd rice. His maternal grandmother brought rice mixed with curd in a silver bowl. Shri Pada ate it with great haste. Shri Pada asked his grandfather to recite the Vedas. Appala Raja Sharma also participated in the Vedic recital. Shri Pada also joined them and chanted Vedic hymns. Narsimha Varma and Sri Sristi listened to the melodious sacred Vedic hymns with profound delight. In the Kukuteshwara temple, lumps of curd rice appeared on the face of the self-manifested Datta idol. As the priest cleaned them away, they kept reappearing. It was strange that the statue of the self-manifested Datta exhibited such a miracle. Dandi Swami along with his disciples and the new disciples in Pitikapuram started from the town to go to the temple amidst loud chanting of the Vedas. They were taking steps but the earth appeared to be expanding to them. For the onlookers, they looked like they were moving their legs but remaining static, unable to move forward. With this sort of peculiar feats, much time elapsed. Seeing this wonder, people there were amazed. In the meantime, the Brahma Danda that Dandi Swami was carrying broke into two pieces. Dandi Swami felt as if his spine was broken into two. He fell flat on the floor. This incident struck awe in the Brahmins of Pitikapuram. They realized that Sri Pada was more powerful than Dandi Swami and that harboring enmity towards Sri Pada would land them in troubles. But they did not know how to leave that place and reach their homes. Moksha comes from the destruction of Moha. In Pitikapuram, there was a resident called Abanna. He made his living by catching snakes and displaying them to the public. At that moment of time, he came to the house of Sri Bapanarya and perform the magic with the snakes. Sri Pada asked the Vedic recital to be stopped. Abanna was fed to his heart's content. Sri Pada called on Abanna and instructed him, Fill your pot fully with water and take it from here and go to the Kukuteshwara temple. There are some great sinners in the Kukuteshwara temple who for no reason abused the incarnation of Lord Datta who is moving in Pitikapuram with a human form. Due to the sin they committed, Chitragupta decided that they should take the birth of ghost after death. I spoke to Chitragupta and worked out a method to nullify that sin. Mother Earth is also enraged by these sinners. Go to the temple and request her as my word to become calm. If those who want to have the darshan of Sri Pada express their consent, sprinkle this water on them. Go to the house of Madhika Supaya, who made the announcement with the drum beat and take him with you. Take out the curd rice from his pot and distribute it to all those as Mahaprasad. 
Abanna and Subaya went to the temple and brought all of them to the house of Sri Baba Narya. Sri Pada in a furious form thundered, You, you were very proud that you were a Dandi Swami. You are an incorrigible idiot who cannot even recognize Datta whom you adore and who is in the form of Sri Pada Sri Vallabha. You have a group of disciples with you. They match you in foolishness. Besides, you have a new set of disciples in Pitikapura. What can you do to me? What is your existence before the sole power that rules the whole creation? What is your capacity? You and all those who depend on your committed great sin because all of you abused the divinity. Chitragupta decided that all of you should live like ghosts for many hundreds of years. Because of my unstinted compassion, I cancelled it. It was resolved that you should face difficulties in very low births even after taking human birth. I withdrew it also with a very small amount of punishment. The form of Sri Pada Sri Vallabha is like a blazing fire. Playing with fire will lead to accidents. Think of what salvation is when myself and my maya are indivisible. Moksha is destruction of moha. If any living person desires to experience pure bliss, I myself will grant it. If he deserves it, it will also be granted if he wants to remain as an embodiment of happiness in an exalted state of heavenly bliss, transcending Maya. In my view, there is no difference between the attributeless one without a form and the one with a form having attributes and between liberation and bondage. Countless new worlds are created, maintained and destroyed every moment. There are no limits or bounds to the supreme states or splendid blissful states of existence which can be attained by living persons. Those who want to come to me after death will definitely come to me. My will decides as to how many hundreds of divine years they would remain in those states and when they would be sent back. I am the director of this devious drama and at present I am in the shape of a man before you. You are seeing me. I came down from the highest state to this human form to inform you that I will be always looking after you even when I am in my formless state. The yogic powers of great yogis must be employed for the welfare of the world. The world does not mean only this earth. It is your duty to help the helpless people who are in a lower position to you. I incarnated to preach the paths of dharma, karma, yoga, bhakti and jnana. I am the sole truth. The origin of all truths. I am the sole dharma. I am the origin of all dharmas. I am the single cause creating all causes. Nothing will be formed in this creation without my will. Without me, there is no creation. You exist because I exist. 
so also the creation what else can be said about the truth go to the himalayas and undertake penance without any attachment do not collect disciples even if you do not get liberation or upliftment there is no loss to me or to the creation the activities in the creation will continue to be carried out as required this is the real matter the procession of the pitikapuram's brahmins following you is like the opera of donkeys in the marriage of camels while the donkeys praise the beauty of the camels the camels praise the melodious music of the donkeys even though they are indulging in mutual admiration the reality remains to be something different shipada made this beneficial preaching the relationship between arundhati and vasistha i asked guru charan i heard that mother arundhati was born in the caste of pariyas how did she marry sage vasistha then guru charan narrated the episode in the ancient times sage vasistha did penance for a thousand years at that time a pariya girl named akshamala served vasistha in accordance with her eligibility the sage was pleased with her service and asked her to request a boon she requested vasistha to be her husband vasistha questioned i am a brahmin and you are a pariya woman how can the marital connection between us be proper then she replied you asked me to request a boon i thus requested you can grant me the boon if you desire so if not please permit me to leave the sage was afraid of breaking his promise and asked her if she would agree with whatever he would do with her body she agreed the sage reduced her to ashes and again brought her to life he did like this for seven times as all the impurities of the low caste birth were purged by the seventh birth she became extremely pure then vasistha married her since she did not abstract even slightly to the rituals conducted by her husband she became famous under the name of arundhati shri pada told this to narsimha varma who was from the lineage of vasistha a person born to a shudra lady through a brahmin can be considered to be a brahmin in his seventh birth by the investiture of the holy thread it is better that all the four castes follow their respective duties according to the divisions ordained on account of bad actions a brahmin may gradually fall down and turn into a shudra a shudra by performing good deeds may gradually rise up and become a brahmin however those who repose unshakable faith in lord datta will achieve exalted positions quickly according to their eligibility Lord Datta can grant longevity health and wealth required for a comfortable life to his devotee irrespective of the caste in which he was born or the conditions under which he lives it is a natural play for shri pada to cut the bonds of karma of many births and accord an elevated position to his devotees 
the assurance of Sri Pada to Datta devotees. We reached the Manchala village while speaking among ourselves about the glory of Sri Pada. The village goddess of Manchala granted us her divine darshan and blessed us. She fed Prasad to us with her holy hands and remarked, Sri Dattatreya, who was the preceptor to Prahlada in ancient times, is today living on the earth in the form of Sri Pada Sri Vallabha. The will of Sri Pada cannot be comprehended. Sri Pada personally told me that in the coming centuries, Prahlada will incarnate as Guru Sarvabhauma and that this place will become famous as Mantralayam. He will daily take the water of the Tungabhadra river. May you have auspicious developments. Saying so, she returned to her former form. When we were about to move from there, a Mala Dasari named Krishna Das came there. The village goddess of Manchala gave Prashad to Krishna Das and gave him a flower garland as a token of her grace and instructed him to go to Kurungadda. We three started our journey to Kurungadda. All Datta devotees belong to one caste. The prasad of Lord Datta is acceptable to them without regard to the caste to which the person offering the prasad belongs. The association of Krishna Das with us infused new enthusiasm. During our conversation, he said, if the significance of the different numbers 16, 116 and 1116 which are offered as Dakshinas is known, then the meaning of the number 2498, the number of Sri Pada, will be understood. Just as the world emerges from Atma, children are born from the father. At the time of marriage, the bridegroom prays to the fire god, O oh, Agnihotra, grant me the birth of ten children with this bride. He becomes the eleventh child. Begetting ten children is approved according to the dharma. Afterwards, his wife has to be regarded as the mother. A son is considered one-tenth part of the father. When ten people each having one-tenth of the value are combined, then the full number of the father is formed. Since Shiva is the personification of Atma, he is revered as complete. When the sixteen one tens are divided by ten, then it will result in the full number one, representing Shiva. Six remains as the reminder. Vishnu is the personification of the original nature with the form of Maya. Nature is one half of Purusha. So half of ten is five. And when the above reminder 6 is divided by 5, then the full number 1 is derived, representing Vishnu. And 1 is left as the reminder. Brahma is one-tenth of Shiva and Vishnu, Purusha and Prakriti as their offspring. So, when the above reminder 1 is divided by 1, the full number 1 representing Brahma is arrived at as a result. There is no reminder left. Purnam means 0. It is attributeless and so it is the form of Rudra. When everything is liquidated, you can only see the great space. 
only in the great space it is possible to liquidate everything the form of vishnu has the characteristic of infinity in the nature of the existence of the creation infinity is unavoidable shri pada possesses 16 brilliant potencies my dear shankara bhat if one thing is broken into countless pieces every piece becomes a void only when such voids are assembled incessantly a limited shape is formed therefore know that both shiva and keshava vishnu are not different in the above decimal division from the remaining 6 one tens which was the remainder after dividing by 10 five one tens was taken as the form of vishnu the creation made up of five elements is considered as the form of vishnu vishnu told virabhadra who destroyed the daksha yagna the fundamental nature assumed the form of parvati for the enjoyment of ishvara the form of durga at the time of the battle with the demons as kalika devi kali devi in her angry mood and the male form as me this is the underlying idea in declaring that shri pada is षोडश कला परिपूर्ण ए परफेक्ट एम्बॉडीमेंट ऑफ सिक्सटीन ब्रिलियंट पोटेंसिस ही लेफ्ट पीटिकापुरम एट द एज ऑफ सिक्सटीन सिंस ही इज एन एम्बॉडीमेंट ऑफ ब्रह्मा विष्णु एंड रुद्रा इट शुड बी नोन दैट ही इज ए षोडश कला परिपूर्ण different forms of deities as vishnu is the embodiment of nature five one tens represent vishnu as brahma is the sun from the yogic union of parvati and parameshwara his is one tenth form of shiva the reason is very clear shiva who is the form of consciousness is important since the form of vishnu represents the illusory universe it is not important therefore brahma is one tenth of shiva number 1 is the symbol of brahma this single digit is spread in the numbers 2 through 9 in the ashtamurtis eight attributes of shiva so brahma got the shape of ninth prajapati in the three numbers 16 100 and 1000 the last two numbers were specially calculated and when 16 is linked with them they became 116 and 1116 if these are divided by 10 they become symbols of all things in the creation the number 1 represents rudra the two full numbers 11 stand for vishnu the three full numbers 111 represent brahma 16 116 and 1116 are called shodasadi tridakshina it was said that those who donate tridakshina three types of dakshina will get brahma gnana when the three types of dakshinas are made it amounts to donating body money and mind when the money equivalent to those above figures is donated the donor would derive the result of gifting the entire world pindandadana donating the body represents the world
our body is in the form of three sacrifices sacrifice in the early morning midday sacrifice and the third sacrifice are called the gayatri trishtum and jagati chandas three forms of vedic poetic meters which have a specific number of letters as required by the representative meters it means that gayatri has 24 letters trishtup has 44 letters and jagati has 48 letters the sum total of these comes to 116 letters therefore by the pindanda dana the above result from the monetary donation will also be derived the incarnation of shri pada is the result of the savitri kataka chayana yagna it is the brilliant light residing in the middle of the region of the sun which prompts all intellectual traits that is mother gayatri she represents number 24 Number 9 is the form of Brahma and number 8 is the form of Maya. Sage Bharadwaja conducted the Savitra Kataka Chayana Yagna in Treta Yuga in Pitika Puram. In accordance with the promise made on that day, the form of Shri Pada Shri Vallabha has manifested now in Pitika Puram. he was seeking arms called dochopati devalakshmi indicating that he is the form of shakti and the form of shakta having the personality of ardhanarishwara and that he is the great incarnation provoking the intellect and natures of the living beings to put them on a righteous path no one knows his potent past times and the grammar of his teaching methods as he is the author of this new grammar it is known only to him i heard so many things from krishna das i learned many more new things those who have arrogance arising from scholarship can never receive the grace of shri pada krishna das started telling again shri pada is all pervading from ant to brahma once shri varma was taking rest in his fields along with shri pada many cobras came there Shri Pada strangely removed the hood of each cobra from its body he threw them all in heaps nearby many big ants which no one saw before gathered there shri varma was sleeping shri pada killed all those ants so that the sleep of shri varma was not disturbed after some time Shri Varma woke up he pitied the ants which lay dead with a smile shri pada said a king should save his servant this is a regulation of nature there is a strange king to these strange ants he is coming soon look in the meantime a big white ant with a strange glow came there it went around all the dead ants all the dead ants came back to life with a smile shri pada said this ant king has the power of sanjeevani with that power it rescued all its ants many such wonders are there in the creation grandpa if you wish i can show such miracles every moment narsimha varma was astonished to see the dead cobras he noticed that it was also the work of shri pada 
Then Shri Pada joined the hood of one cobra to the body of another cobra and stroked it with his divine hand. Like that, he granted life to all the cobras. They came back to life and after circumambulating Shri Pada, they left. Who knows why those cobras came and why Shri Pada treated them like that? When I inquired Shri Pada about this matter, he observed, when the strength of the Rahu planet is not adequate, people will face obstacles in all their work. They will have the experience as if they are in the firm grip of a python. By some, this is called as Kala Sarpa Yoga. Rahu is the presiding deity of serpents. The serpents causing such obstructions are invisible to our eyes. I was destroying these obstacles in that way and causing comfort and happiness to my devotees. We reached Kurungadda safely. With a charming smile, Shri Pada blessed us. Shri Pada Rajam Sharanam Prapadhyay